All right, we're back. Let's chat all things United States versus Japan. We're going to spoil it for you. United States, the victors in this one, 1-0. One, and before we actually start reacting to the starting lineups, talking about the games, just got to put ourselves on blast. Lisa, we did make a prediction for this game. And we said, hey, like, we're going we're gonna to see a win for the United States. But the score lines that you and I went with were two goal margins. Yeah. You had a 2-0. I had a 3-1. This one ends tense and narrow, a 1-0 victory for the United States. This was a really um, interesting game. This was a very interesting game. That's how I'm going to say it. Um, whether it was the United States, whether it was Japan, this game was incredible to watch. I can't imagine being a neutral party and watching this game, uh, being in the stadium, right? Uh, this, there was a lot that we have to unpack with this game because, yeah, I thought that after the United States' first game against Canada with, with Swanson getting two goals, the midfield for the U.S. looking really strong. We saw defensive uh integrity between the midfield um uh, of course there was Alyssa Nair Becky Sauerbrunn providing a lot of communication and a lot of organization defensively for the United States but um I was just really impressed after that first game for the United States then we head into this second matchup for the U.S. against Japan and and Japan is a incredibly talented team they're compact defensively they're really organized they are really disciplined they're very technical, which can pose a lot of questions to a United States side um, and what they're able to do. And also, I mean, Canada struggled in that first game against the U.S. So we knew that this was going to be more of a test for the United States uh, against Japan. But I just don't think people were expecting it to be this much of a test. Because if you look at some of the stats and how this game was broken down, it is shocking that Japan did not get a goal. It is shocking that Japan did not get a goal. It would even just like shots, right? 15 shots for Japan and only five for the United States. Two a piece for shots on goal for each of these sides. Um, this was a very, very well battled game and it opened, a, a, it really showcased a lot of holes for the United States and forced a lot of questions on Black Wedanowski and this US side, which is exactly what we want five months out from the Women's World Cup. Look, <clears throat> I I enjoyed this game. Yeah, it might have been agonizing, you know, if you're just sort of, if you're taking a look at it as a, as a casual fan. But taking it back for you and I here, referring to the preview, the predictions that we made in there, and I'll still refer to that preview. I'll even refer to, you know, just our build up to this moment um, and this tournament. We. We reacted to the roster when Andonovsky named the 23 mm -hmm. players who were going. We, you know, we reacted to the scheduling and to the, the teams when they were announced for She Believes. I feel like we've been talking about this window of time forever. And it it's this is the game that kind of delivered for me. Yeah. Um, I don't did it like listen, did it probably feel great for the team to go out there and, and and get a quick start and win and get a two goal victory against Canada? Sure. Uh, but we were looking, you and I, I know Lisa, we've talked about this pretty frequently, probably over the last four to six games for this team, that we wanted to see something where we would get an eyes view of perhaps more defensive responsibilities from this team. And I think we got that out of this game. Uh, I think we have, when we're talking about it, just hearing you with the quick kind of recap, I think we got to, we have to start with the lineups in terms of right. what we could have anticipated in this game. We saw five player rotations to the starting lineup for Andonovsky in this game against Japan. Casey Murphy got the start in goal. Sofia Huerta, Alana Cook, Naomi Girma, and Emily Fox to round out the back line. Christy Mewis, Lindsay Horan, and Ashley Sanchez in the middle third, and Lynn Williams, Alex Morgan, and Mallory Swanson to round out the top line there. 11 players, like I said, five uh, player rotations. We figured we were going to see that due to the quick turnaround and the type of round-robin style competition that this is. Um, but I think with those five players, I think you look at that number and you're looking immediately at those players to see like who, like how they're going to perform, what's their impact going to be. Um, and I think if we break this down half by half, 
Yeah. Even though you, you, we ran down the stats and the numbers just now, um, it was a little, it was a little nervy. I guess maybe that's the word I'll go with. <laughs> You know, I, I, nervy, perhaps. Is, is, I, I don't mind nervy. that word. I don't mind that word at all. I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty good shout. I mean, when you look at the the changes, um, none of them too surprising, right? I think that we're seeing Black Wodanowski utilizing the versatility of an Emily Fox on either side of the pitch because mm-hmm. she's. She started the first game on the right. Uh, She starts this game on the left. We ultimately see her switch to the right throughout this game. I think that is something of a Swiss army knife that Black Wodanowski is going to continue to use um, in Emily Fox. And we're seeing it being utilized right in back-to-back games. Um, I I loved the Germa Cook center back duo. I think you have to be asking questions of those center backs and, and to have a Casey Murphy in goal behind them. It's different than an Alyssa mm-hmm. Nair. Um, I, I also think, I, I know you and I talked about an AD French in goal, what we were going to see. Um, and we, we will preview the next match for the U S but I think that we're seeing that Casey Murphy is growing into this role as the number two goalkeeper on this team. I think she proved herself in this game. There was a lot of questions asked of Casey Murphy, she kept a she kept a clean sheet. She kept the ball out of the back of the net. There was definitely some questionable moments, but other moments where Casey Murphy stepped up and, and saved this game for the United States. I was really impressed with what Casey Murphy did throughout this game. Um, and, and, but I think it did expose defensively what was going to happen for this team. I mean, you you just mentioned it. It was Christy Mewis in the midfield, Lindsey Horan, and Ashley Sanchez. Uh, Rose Lavelle still listed as unavailable for this match for the United States, dealing with a little bit of that, that muscle strain that happened a few days before the competition started in she believes cup which allowed for ashley sanchez to get that start again but we got to see christy mewis in the defensive six and i think that with black wanonofsky looking at his options between andy sullivan taylor corniak and, and christy mewis this is another option um I, I was pretty impressed with christy mewis in this role but we also saw a different structure in the midfield because the first game it was very much side by side for those players it was haran and sullivan being a dual six in this game against japan haran was was pushed much higher and much wider and it was christy mewis left alone in that six and i, I just don't think that's going to work moving forward for this team we got to see it and it was tried but haran was was lost in this midfield. Um, I think Christy Mewis played the best out of those three midfielders in a role that she doesn't typically play. She's Mewis is much higher up the field traditionally, formerly with the national team when she's played in the midfield with her club team at Houston Dash, now at Gotham last year. Mewis plays higher, and she played the defensive six role, and she played it very, very well. We have stats to run through on her as well, but I, I just – think that Haran is going to be much better utilized deeper being in that double pivot in the defensive midfield because Sanchez was not inspiring in this this game especially in the first half and and neither was Haran. I do wonder a little bit if you know something <laughs> like the player rotation kind of um disrupts perhaps some of the flow from a qu- in a quick turnaround from game one to game two. It's a, but, it's a no. passing thought, but it's not an excuse or it shouldn't be an excuse, especially if you're a player that's getting those two consecutive starts, right? So when we're looking at that middle third specifically, we've got Haran and Sanchez with second consecutive starts. And the new piece there is Christy Mewis going forward and getting the mm-hmm. start against a new team uh, in, in a competition. So I'm, I'm with you in terms of, you know, hearing you say like, oh, I think that Mewis was was the better amongst the three. But I also think you can add on to that and say that she was the better amongst the three in a not so good first 45 minutes. And oh, that's yeah, like was- sort of what I think. I th- it was a defensive first 45 minutes for the United oh States. My- Goodness. That's, and I, maybe that's why Christy Mewis looked so good because she was being asked to do so much defensive work. And that's what her focus was heading into this game. They did not have a lot of time on the ball when, whenever they were, you saw whenever they were trying to maybe, you know, go ahead and, and spearhead at something or, or lay off the pass for an attack. They were just swamped. You saw it. it there were moments in time where there were not just one, but double coverage from Japan in terms of their, their counter press. Amazing. Um, yeah. And it's just like it, but 
there was this other fleeting thought where I was just kind of like, listen, like Japan has, uh, you know, the better of the attacking play in mm-hmm. this first half. And the fact that they weren't, they hadn't gotten on the scoreboard in the opening half hour, I was like, you know what? I'm like, this is actually not good for Japan. Mm-hmm. The fact that they just are going and going and going and they're not getting anything like specifically dangerous. Like they got, we're talking about in the, in the first half, alone just get six shots off compared yes. to just two by the United States. But guess what? United States, Mallory Swanson only needed the one time on target, you know? So it's just kind of like, I would imagine that that's so frustrating as opposition when you're yeah. going against a team like the United States, and that you're putting together all of this good play, exactly. you have the stronger presentation of attack, you know, and then you're exiting this first half down one <laughs> on one shot from Mallory Swanson, who ends up uh, uh, scoring uh, an, in her fifth consecutive game. Uh, that becomes Mallory Swanson's sixth goal of 2023 on 11 shots, Sandra. Six goals on 11 shots for Swanson. Um, that is amazing. And, and mm-hmm. that's it, that just speaks so much to the stride that Swanson is on right now. But also a, a team can't rely on Swanson to get one shot a game mm-hmm. and score one goal. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're Japan, you're incredibly frustrated at that 35th minute mark, 40, 40 minute mark when when this happens. Um, and honestly, we saw the frustration in the United States because they were without the ball so much in that first 45 minutes. They were having to defend looking more like a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-5-1 in their defensive shape, which frankly, we haven't seen enough that the United States be put on their heels and have to defend in their defensive half for long stretches of time. I liked watching it. I liked watching these players problem solved. Of course, I was a little bit nervous and I was impressed watching Japan, but I wanted to see how the United States could problem solve against an incredibly talented and organized Japan side because uh, Japan gave the United States, a little taste of their own medicine, what they gave to Canada. Because in the first match for the U.S. against Canada, they came out fast, they came out hard and strong, and they were pressing and they were winning the ball back. Japan that did that to the United States, and the United States had to deal with it. And there was definitely moments where they did not deal with it, giving the ball away, trying to clear it and not clearing it far enough or or clearing it to no one, and Japan just being able to reset their offense Ultimately, we saw the United States kind of default to this kick and run direct style of soccer, which we just haven't seen from the United States uh, since the Olympics, I'm going to say. I was going to say, we we probably have to talk a little bit about how that goal yeah. happens or how it's, it's, it's orchestrated, you know, by Sofia Huerta, who at this point we're talking about the players who got rotated in and which of the ones got, kind of got breakout. Maybe the scoreline – is it indicative of, of, of perhaps some of the performances that we saw between mm-hmm. Cook and Girma? You know, like we, I wanted to see that. I've said that a few times in the show already that I need to see Girma and Cook specifically starting together. Uh, got to see that in this game. Um, what did you think of it? It was like average. I thought it was like mm-hmm. fine. I think if you look at the score line and you look at sort of the overall play, you're like, okay, you you protected the clean sheet. We look back into this sort of final 20 minutes of the game. It sort of just sort of looks, I'm, and this is both teams, actually. I was going to say that the both teams kind of look as if they were a little spent, you know, kind of gassed maybe mm-hmm. from the quick turnaround, but Japan also kind of suffering from that as well. I mean, that takes a lot out of you to sort of commit to that type of press. And, as long as and they when have. you're defending as much as they were, right? I mean, if against Canada, the center backs didn't do as much work as they did in this game against Japan. I thought that Girma came out there and sort of showed what she can do and what she can provide for this team. Yep. I thought for Alana Cook, this is two consecutive um, starts for this center back now. And sh- for the longest time for this team, Alana Cook has been um, the healthiest option. Right. For the United States. Good way to put it. In this position. And she has spent a lot of time in this role over, let's just say, like the last 18 months or so. And there's been a lot of rotation within that, whether it's been due to, uh, player absences because of injury 
or, uh, you know, getting in a new, pl- a new player into the mix like uh, a Naomi Girma because of the type of club season that she was putting together. Um, and now I think it's just about not so much seeing who that best uh, duo is going to be through the World Cup because I, I imagine that their group stage is going to mirror some of what we're seeing in the She Believes Cup, there's going to be a game where perhaps your ideal center back duo does not get that start right. against a Vietnam, you know, going through the course of, of, of the three matches in New Zealand. So that's why I say it was just it's just fine. It's fine. They got they ultimately get the clean sheet in this one. But looking at that first half specifically, I just felt like for the large chunks of that 45 minutes. Alana Cook was playing with her hands behind her back because she was trying to ensure that she was providing coverage without giving up a handball because Japan was getting their shots off in this in this first half. So, you know, I, you I wasn't that, that impressed this performance or do you look at that and say that that's kind of nervy? It's nervy. That is very nervy to me as players you want to be able to at least control some part of the game and and even if you're put under pressure you have to be able to complete passes as defenders right as center backs without getting them intercepted and I I think that I was more impressed with Garma than I was Cook I think Cook made too many 50-50 passes gave hospital balls away uh, and just wasn't wasn't stepping up to the plate with the ball in order to connect passes and get the ball out and be options for the United States. And that's really where they struggled. As soon as they would win it defensively, they they couldn't connect anything and they couldn't move the ball out. And I think Germa was a bit more aggressive, right? Stepping to the ball, being that first defender um, where it needs to be a balance between those two. And, and I think if Becky Sauerbrunn were to be in there, maybe it would have been a little bit of a different outcome. Maybe Japan not getting as many chances. Um, I'm not sure, but I was I was a little disappointed in that center back duo. I, I think Gurma did better than Cook. Let's talk a little bit about the outside backs. I heard you talk about yeah. Emily Fox. We saw Sophia Wirtz get the start in this one. Uh, finally, it sort of feels like she hasn't gotten a start in, in some time with this team. But uh, getting the first half, the first 45 minutes in this game. Um, and I would say Huerta, along with, you know, Casey Murphy even at some times, um, Cook at some times, just sort of looked like there were just some balls that were given away. Yes. Um, and yes, that's maybe, again, that's another compliment to Japan and how they were applying the pressure. But there were moments where the decision making to lay off the ball into certain areas of spaces were ultimately just turnovers. Yeah. And a lot of turnovers. Up until, up until uh, you know, the, the, the goal sequence, I think you sort of look at the back line and you're wondering at this point, well, who's going to, is there going to be someone that's rotated out at halftime? And it did end up being Huerta, but she exited, she exits this match helping to, to sort of facilitate this goal. And she got the hockey assist. She got, she got the, he, we're talking about that long, those long direct balls. We just see Huerta, you know, get it with, get it up to to Morgan and she holds up the play and she also lobs this ball into space and Swanson gets behind it and she doesn't need a lot of time and encouragement. And all of a sudden she's behind it and is able to control the ball and get the shot and get the goal and finishes cleanly. So they enter halftime, despite having some of these nervy and cagey moments in this game, they, they exit into halftime with the lead. So these adjustments that I thought we were going to see, like multiple subs, we only see one. Mm-hmm. We see Sonnet for Huerta to start this second half. So in terms of what we're looking at of the outside backs, we've got two that we can look at in 45-minute shifts. Do you feel similarly, like hearing you talk about like Cook and Germa of the two of the two center backs, did you of the three uh, outside backs that we saw in this game, do you feel stronger about one over the other? Um, I-, I was a little disappointed in what we saw from Sofia Huerta in the outside back position. Huerta is a converted outside back. She was a former forward and, and Huerta's skills and her strengths as an outside back include attacking up the flank, oh, yeah. taking the space in front of her combination play with midfields and forwards, sending crosses in. That is her bread and butter. And oh, yeah. she is very good at it. I-, I will not take that away from Huerta at all. But mm-hmm. when you are pu- 
pressed up against a Japan side that is putting you under a lot of pressure, not letting you have any time on the ball, doing a high press, making it very difficult for you and your team to build out of the back. That's not where to strength. When when players are attacking her and it's 2v1 against Huerta, 1v1 against Huerta, she got beat. She got beat down that right side of the flank. Uh, meanwhile, I think you look at a, an Emily Fox, and although she does have those strengths of getting into the attack, having the freedom to kind of just run forward, and she can send crosses in, Fox is also a very good 1v1 defender. She also has that background of, of being a defender, and I'm not saying you have to to be a defender by any means, but I think... Emily Fox shone a bit brighter and had more positives defensively against Japan just because Huerta was forced to defend so much and couldn't attack at all. It did, did nothing well with the ball because the United States didn't have the ball and it exposed Huerta's defensive skills. Let's chat a little bit more about some of the subs that took in this game to sort of mm-hmm. kind of wrap things up and put a little bit of a bow on it. We we saw Andy Sullivan get back into this game. Uh, we saw, excuse me, we, yeah, we saw Andy Sullivan get back into this game. Trinity Rodman get back into this game right around the hour mark. Those were the two subs coming in at the 64th minute. Ashley Hatch on for uh, Alex Morgan in the 70th minute. And uh, Megan Rapino on for Swanson as well in the 70th minute. Taylor Cornia getting some time in this game. Again, as a very late game off the bench option uh, coming in in the 85th minute. For Lindsay Horan and getting a caution immediately yeah. that was very confusing uh I think it was just sort of because of the the uh the sub window and how that took took place um but uh, in terms of these uh, extra substitutions these players that came on um you know ones that stood out or, or were able to make an impact for you in their limited time yeah, I mean, I, I like some of these subs coming in. Honestly, Sonic coming on at the 45-minute mark. I know we just talked a little bit about the outside backs, but um, I was impressed with Sonic, very impressed with her in the first game against Canada. This one, uh, maybe not as much. She didn't have as much of an impact on the game. Um, and then Rodman coming in and, and Sullivan for Sanchez. Um, this, this was a little bit different in the midfield, these substitutes that happened because um, – it, it players were pushed higher, right? Haran was pushed much higher in the midfield um, as Sullivan came on for Sanchez and, and kind of how everything unfolded there. Um, and then Hatch again, Hatch coming in for Morgan. I, I just wasn't as impressed with her as I had been in months prior, even against Canada. It was kind of like the pieces weren't coming together. I'm, I'm curious if, if, it becomes like you have to play the players that play in club together. Like, right. If we see an Ashley Sanchez, a Trinity Rodman and Ashley Hatch and Andy Sullivan together, will there be a little bit of magic happening? But that's not what this team is waiting for. That's what club is for. And that's what they can do there. But you need to be able to perform, create as a forward, as a, as an attacking midfielder without relying on players around you. Um, frankly, we, we got to see the first glimpses of, of a Megan Rapino in a tournament like this coming in for Swanson I think that immediately as soon as Megan Rapino came on there was a bit more possession for the United States team just Megan Rapino dropping deeper into the midfield and, and connecting those passes um, not many minutes given to her not many minutes given to Korniak but ultimately I think that with Sam with excuse me Christy Mewis in the midfield I was impressed with it I think that if we do a Christy Mewis with Uh, alongside an Andy Sullivan in the midfield being both defensive sixes that could open up some very cool possibilities for this United States team. And and I think Haran needs to be deeper in the midfield than higher. Yeah. I would like to see it. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I mean, you've got one more game uh, in this tournament. Why not try some stuff? Because after this, the, the windows are just two remaining in terms of the available prep time for, for this team. Um, but uh, I think in terms of sort of the, the main kind of, I think, breakout performances out of this game, we, we take a look at, at those substitutions and sort of wrap up and close the game. And then we sort of take a look at those, those five players that got rotated in, right? You want to yeah. look at these players who finally get this window of time to really try to leave that impact uh, on the coaching staff as, you know, that player pool tends to get smaller and smaller as the World Cup gets closer and closer. But I think – Obviously, the big standout is Casey Murphy coming up with massive saves down the stretch. Um, 
you know, for, for a team that sort of just sort of looked like they were feeling the 90 minutes <laughs> at that point. Um, but uh, coming up with a couple highlights type of real kind of stats or excuse me, sort of highlights. Uh, but I liked Gurma in, in, yep. in position as well. It's great to see her. And, um, you know, for so, some of the kind of nervy kind of moments out of Huerta, I think this is just an, a game from her. That's just another one of those reminders of, of what her strengths are, you know? Yeah. What I mean? So um, good to see it. And I hope we get to see some more rotations in the yeah. next game. How about you? Who stood out? I agree. Casey Murphy for sure stood out, kept this, kept this score line at, at a zero for the United States, kept the shutout. Um, I think really grew into this role as, as much of a leader as she could be in her communication and in the way she organized defensively. There was a lot of questions asked of Casey Murphy, and I think she answered them very well. I, I was very impressed with her. I think Germa in the center back as well. I think Fox is someone that Vlachonovsky is going to lean on. Um, of course, Mallory Swanson, like, of course, like this player is just electric right now, whatever she's eating keep feeding it to her you know keep her feeling good and and she's just able to score easy goals and I don't mean easy goals I just mean like clinical goals and that is that is what was lacking look easy yes and that was what was lacking from her game uh three years ago four years ago right that's what she was struggling with um I honestly was very impressed with Christy Mewis in the midfield I think she looked the best in that first half out of any of the midfielders um there was a lot of questions asked of Christy Mewis and, and she answered them the in the role that she was doing as the defensive midfielder, as the six. She made a lot of really big stops. She had nine defensive recoveries, six tackles. She won 10 duels out of 12 contested duels. I think defensively, Christy Mewis was fantastic for the United States. And then on the other side of the ball, because Christy Mewis is, is traditionally more of a 10, much higher up the pitch, she's got a really good vision vision to understand how to play balls, where to slip them through. Perhaps there are times when she plays them and, and maybe it's not the safest choice. We don't see traditional sixes play that pass, but with Chrissy Mewis, she's able to do that. She had 83 touches in this game against Japan. Um, her passing completion rate was over 90% for each half 61 of 67 passes were completed. That is an unreal stat for a defensive midfielder and a lot of these passes were forward played passes right you're not just connecting as a defensive six with your center backs when there's no one around you um i was really impressed with christy mewis i'm excited to see what happens next for the u.s against brazil 100 right on i love that i think that's a good pick love that you had the numbers to to back it up as well uh but there's look the win means that the united states stay on top of the standings and she believes cup they are currently in first place but canada and brazil also have a win under their belt in this competition goal differential might come into play mm -hmm. and the final match day 